Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat. Today we're going to talk about finding real peace. A common question for beauty pageant contestants has been, what do you desire most or what do you hope to see in your lifetime? Well, what's the number one answer? <laughs> you know what they say, we want to see world peace. People would love to see world peace, but I'm convinced it's only on their terms. In other words, <laughs> it's never gonna happen. Now, I believe that God does desire world peace, but it is on His terms. And thankfully, the peace He offers in eternity isn't world peace, <laughs> it's universal peace. So, what will that look like? Let's turn back to Revelation chapter 21, beginning in verse 22. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, how I wish I had just a little bit more time to unpack the uniqueness of our eternity. John writes that he saw no temple. Uh, today, we see temples everywhere. We see churches, mosques, Hindu temples, synagogues, and so on. We even see reference to the temple of God in heaven in the earlier chapters of Revelation. But in eternity, God needs no temple. He is the temple. He will dwell with us. You see, we won't go to Him. He comes to us, and He will be with us. It says that there is no moon or sun on the new earth. It's unnecessary. It's God's glory. God's glory will shine so all can see. I wonder, though, what will the sky look like without a moon or a sun? Then in verse 25, John begins to describe this universal peace. Though there will be gates in the new capital city, they're never shut. It's like living in many rural communities today. People there, they just don't lock their doors. They have peaceful neighbors. Well, in the new heaven and new earth, in this new capital city, the gates are never shut. They're never locked. Because according to verse 27, nothing unclean or detestable will be around. You see, there's only going to be the glorified saints. We will be dwelling with God. You see, there is no going back to our old ways. Our desires, our flesh, they have been glorified and now they are unchangeable. It will finally be that real, unchanging and universal peace. So this is my challenge for you today. How can you show this future peace with someone who is far from God? It may be by living peacefully with the body of Christ. It might be by spending quality time with someone who would typically be rejected or maybe ignored. It may be showing hospitality to someone whose lifestyle is celebrated by the culture, but rejected by God's perfect standard. There are so many ways to deliver peace as a sampling of what's to come. God's peace can be experienced in our lives today. But that universal peace won't be experienced until the end of time. 
So together, let's deliver a taste of that peace today.